is actually a much larger peace constituency in Amritsar today than you would find further down uh, in other parts of the uh, country. Every year on August 14, there's this Aman Ki Asha, which uh, Kuldeep Nayar started. Yeah, where people on. go And, and it, it happens despite acts of terrorism committed by Pakistan. Me I find that remarkable, that, that uh, this capacity to uh, heal and go beyond anger. But you know, you mentioned about humanity. And my grandfather wrote two novels on the partition. I have to stop and ask this question. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Powerful. Was it worthwhile to lose our humanity for the sake of independence? For the sake of independence. We are, we are almost like 30, uh, 30 minutes away from the Wagha border and we are also you know in a state that has suffered drastically due to the partition. So how important do you think it is to humanize the leadership? You know, because we have these exaggerated accounts of, you know, you know demonizing the other one. And uh, however, the reality was the, the partition or the, the independence of the, of the subcontinent was becoming so cumbersome that uh, most of the people were just willing to take discounts just to expedite it. Uh, one of the accounts was uh, a BBC journalist asked Nehru and he says that you know, we were tired old men, we just wanted to get rid of it. Well, you know, because you're in Amritsar, and because this is the city that probably bore the brunt of the partition more than perhaps any other any. single yeah. um, city. Um, what I find remarkable is that people have gotten over it. Um, there is actually a much larger peace constituency in Amritsar today than you would find further down uh, in other parts of the uh, country. Yeah, I think it's remarkable this capacity to move on in life. Mm. Uh, and, and, it, and it begs the question, like if you see the bonhomie between a Lahori and an Amritsari when they meet, um, particularly in places like Dubai or London and so on, it kind of reminds you that is language and culture a stronger bond than religion yeah the, um, that's right. what oscar wilde said right, right. Uh, about so, uk so, and the us so, so religion is being used to divide hmm. uh, people and yet the bonds of cultural connect are, are seem to be stronger right. intergenerational yeah. lasting further yeah. into yeah. In, in, into time um, this is a city you mentioned about Atari uh, Vaga border. Yeah. Uh, every year on August 14, there's this Aman Ki Asha, which uh, Kuldeep Nayar started. Yeah, where people on. go. And, and it, it happens despite acts of terrorism committed by Pakistan. M maybe because the people of the city face the brunt of partition and the bloodshed. That's why they are, you know, they have experienced the other side of it. Yeah. That's why they want to be on the other side of it. So, uh, so I, I find that remarkable that, that uh, this capacity to uh, heal and go beyond anger but you know you mentioned about humanity and my grandfather wrote two novels on the partition the first one deal called hymns in blood deals with the plight of the hindu and sikh community being forced to migrate from areas around rawalpindi into uh, amritsar as the first staging point and so there's that whole trauma of the exodus hmm. that they uh, undergo and my grandfather is unsparing in narrating the atrocities of the pillage and rape and plunder and murder and brutality and yet some of the strongest characters in his book are Muslim families who are willing to give up their own lives to save their Hindu or Sikh neighbors and so he's reminding us that even at those worst of times, humanity still survives. Exists, yeah. And he's cautioning you not to fall into the trap laid for you by politicians or religious bigots or uh, uh, others who want you to believe black and white because it isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it never is going to be. Uh, my question about humanity was whether our society is ready uh, to, to look at the human side of leadership that was at the hem during the, the partition of the country because you know there's always going to be it's very easy to pick out faults right like you could you shouldn't have given it up or you know probably we should have just held on to the other side of India 
However, the reality Look, was very different. Hindsight is always 2020. 2020, right? correct. And, and, and you know, uh, uh, you can always take different perspectives with the benefit of time. Hmm. Um, but at that point of time, based on circumstances that existed hmm. in front of you, hmm. I think they were presented with bad or worse no options. options correct and 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 you know the challenge really was to take the least worst option none of these was an optimal solution that they would have wanted when they started the freedom struggle mm -hmm. that's very true but but you know if, if your options are to have the guillotine mm -hmm. of partition or to continue to hemorrhage indefinitely what would you prefer with the cuts that yes. are going on yeah yeah the world has never seen anything like this before, right? Like in the recent history, in the last yeah. uh, post uh, post the Treaty of Westphalia, we've never seen a, a division of this scale, right? Nothing. Yet it's so, uh, you know, not talked about as much as should be talked about. Or probably there should be a more nuanced take to uh, partition as yeah. we are not taught in schools. But those who are interested in history certainly do delve into it and mm -hmm. I've met plenty of people in in UK and uh, elsewhere mm -hmm. who've read about the partition mm -hmm. or if not that they've certainly seen Gandhi mm -hmm. Richard mm -hmm. film, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and know a little bit from from the from the film about it mm -hmm. um, I think you know why go overseas our own people how many of them are aware of the details of what happened, um, you know, and and, and and you know, in his book *Hymns and Blood*, my grandfather makes this really interesting point, a very uh, controversial one. He says, "I, who have always fought for India's independence mm. and lived to see this day, mm. today, as the rest of the country is celebrating and tricolor is being hoisted in all buildings." Mm. I have to stop and ask this question. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Powerful. Was it worthwhile to lose our humanity for the sake of independence? For the sake of independence. Wow. Well, but here we are. I mean, uh, two, two neighbors, uh, both going, undergoing, you know, one undergoing development, the other, <laughs> the other undergoing turmoil. Uh, you know, and one of the professors also <coughs> Uh, you know, I was at Punjab University and one of the very interesting things I found out, the spelling of Punjab University is still the spelling that they use uh, in Lahore. That's P-A-N-J-A-B. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be a remnant of former India, uh, you know, in our institutions and in everything that we do, especially in this part of the country.